Welcome to the castle, everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42, and this is Character Vault, a series where I go through different RPG games and I go through a whole tutorial on how to create characters within that system. And today I have something very special for you. I'm actually really excited about this one. Today, we're going to create a character using the Fallout, the role-playing game system. And this is by Modifius Entertainment. Now, if you don't know, Modifius does uh, RPG systems like Star Trek, Conan. Um, they've also gotten into some uh, war gaming stuff like the Fallout Wasteland Warfare uh, miniatures game, as well as the Skyrim one, which has come out recently. And so they've actually been going into some different franchises, all by Bethesda. And so it actually was just a matter of time before they kind of switched over from the miniature side and actually developed a full-fledged role-playing game. And I am, like, super excited about this one because a Fallout RPG has, like, been something on my mind for, like, I don't know how many years. And so we're actually going to get to create a character. Now, the Fallout system is a 2D20 system, and we'll kind of get into a little bit of that when I go through my full review. But for now, all you need to know about it is that for any skill checks that you make, you're going to be rolling at minimum two 20-sided dice, and you're going to try to roll underneath your attribute or your special, whatever it's called. So let's head on over to the character creation section which is, I remember it's like on page 40 something. Here we go. Character creation, by the way, I'm going to point this out right now. All of the artwork, like on these spreads for the chapters are absolutely fantastic. I love this. <laughs> I like get so excited every time I look at it. But here we are at character creation. It's chapter three in the actual book. And this is actually a fairly lengthy book. It's over 400 pages long. And so you're actually getting a lot of content in this book, but that's not for this video, so I'm going to skip all that. Um, before we actually get into the character creation side of things, um, if you've played Fallout before, a lot of these termin a lot of this vocabulary is going to be the same, so you still have your special attributes, so things like strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. Those are all the same here. So like strength is a measure of your physical prowess. It's what you use to make melee attacks and melee damage. And it also affects how much stuff you can carry. Perception is how easily you notice danger and how aware you are of the environment. And this actually affects your initiative in combat. And it's also used to make attacks with energy weapons. Um, perception is also very useful when you're scavenging. They don't mention it here, but in the scavenging section of the book, uh, perception plays a major role in that. Endurance is their natural toughness and resilience and, and resilience towards other things. Um, they determine how many hit points you have. So that's endurance. Charisma is your natural charisma. Um, your natural charisma influences how effectively you can convince people of your opinions and change their minds and bartering. And so intelligence is how smart you are. It actually uh, determines, I think, how many skill points you get or at, the, at least at the very beginning during character creation. So the more intelligence you have, the higher, the more skills that you can actually get. Um, agility is how fast and agile you are, um, your balance, athletic suppleness, and how precisely you can control your body. This is what you would use to make arranged attacks with small guns. And luck is like, it's kind of hard to explain, but there actually is a viable reason to spec into luck. Um, so a lot of the times when you're scavenging, um, you can actually use luck to increase your odds at doing something. Like luck is actually an expendable resource that you can use. And I believe you get it back at the beginning of every session or something like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm still going through my first read through. So I haven't really taken my notes yet. And then you have your skills. And there are some of the same, some of the skills in here are the same as in the Fallout games. So you have athletics, Barter, or actually athletics is new, I believe, but you have barter, big guns, energy weapons, explosives, lockpick, medicine, melee weapons, pilot, which is also new in this game, repair, 
science, small guns, sneak, speech, survival, throwing, and unarmed. So they've definitely included some new ones just for the RPG aspect of this game, and that's okay. And it also feels like they took some out from the games, and that's also okay. I mean, it wouldn't make sense if for one thing and not for the other to keep it in. So I'm really glad. You actually get a nice blurb of what each of the skills entail, which is always nice. And then we have our derived stats, just things like health points, your defense, and any resistances you have. And my favorite thing about this entire book is actually the perks. And my gosh, are there a ton of perks. Like, you take any of the Fallout games, like base, and there's just as many perks. Like, there's seriously a ton of perks, (laughs) which is really cool. And so here's how we are going to go about creating our character. We're gonna choose our origin. We will figure out what our special attributes are. We'll tag some skills and start buying some skill ranks. We'll choose our first perk. We'll calculate our derived stats, our HP and our carrying weight and defense and stuff like that. And then we'll also choose our starting equipment. Now, the actual character sheet for this is actually looking pretty cool. Um, I managed to find this uh, editable PDF copy um, with a quick Google search. So feel free to do that. I really do like that armor in this game is actually by piece. So let's say I'm wearing leather armor or something like that or some raider armor. Um, It can either go on my arms or my torso or my legs. I actually have to specify where that's going because it's going to provide physical damage resistance for that part of the body if it is if it ends up taking damage. And that is actually really cool. That's very indicative of Fallout, in my opinion. We have things like our weapons, and then we have how many caps we have, um, ammo that we have, and our perks and traits right here along the right side. So here we go. What kind of a character are we going to create? Well, let's get into our origins. So origins are basically like your classes in the Fallout RPG game. Um, There's about seven of them, or six. There are six different origins that you can take. The first one is the Brotherhood Initiated. So if you've played Fallout games and you know who the Brotherhood of Steel are, and this is the person, this is a person that actually comes from the Brotherhood of Steel. This is a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. And each of the origins also gets a special trait. So the Brotherhood Initiate gets the Chain That Binds trait. You gain one additional tax skill, which must be one of energy weapons, science, or repair. As a member of the Brotherhood of Steel, you are bound by the Chain of Command, the Chain That Binds. You must carry out the orders of your immediate superiors, and you are responsible for your subordinate siblings. If you do not carry out your duty, you are expelled from the Brotherhood and your technology will be reclaimed by any means necessary. So really cool right there. If you are into playing the Brotherhood Initiate and struggling with, you know, all the commands from up top and whoever happens to be in your party. Then we have Ghouls. Ghouls have the special trait Necrotic Post-Human. So Ghouls in Fallout if you don't already know, are people who actually didn't make it into one of the vaults. They were exposed to intense radiation, and over time, they lost all their hair. They became basically a ghoul. Um, Most of the people who turned into ghouls became feral ghouls, and there's some people that kind of retained their intelligence, and so you are playing one of these types of ghouls. So Necrotic Post Human is... You are immune to radiation damage. In fact, you're healed by it. You regain 1 HP for every 3 points of radiation damage inflicted upon you. And if you rest in an irradiated location, you may re-roll your dice pool when checking if your injuries heal. In addition, survival becomes a tag skill, increasing it by 2 ranks. You age at a much decreased rate and you're probably older than your unmutated companions. You may even have survived the Great War of 2077. But you're sterile. The first generation of ghouls is the last, as the saying goes. You may face discrimination from smooth skins, increasing the difficulty or complication range of charisma tests depending on your opponent's beliefs. 
So that's the ghouls, and that's actually very cool. I really do like how these traits are really indicative of Fallout, specifically for that specific like race, and that's really cool. I'm really digging that. Then we have Super Mutants. They have the trait Forced Evolution. Your initial strength and endurance attributes are increased by 2 each, and your maximum strength and endurance are increased to 12, as aside from 10 that the other characters start with. But your maximum intelligence and charisma are both reduced to 6. You may not have more than 4 ranks in any skills, which I believe 6 is the highest for any skill that you can get, and you are completely immune to radiation and poison damage. You stand over 7 feet tall, and your body is bulky and muscular. Your skin is green, yellow, or gray, regardless of what color it was when you were human. You do not seem to age, but you are sterile. You can only wear armor, which has been made to fit a superhuman. I absolutely love this origin, and I think this is going to be the one that I'm going to build here today. But if you don't know, super mutants are people who were tested upon, and they were given this... Um, this concoction called FEV. Um, and so they were basically grown in a lab by the scientists. And that it's, it's, it's a really interesting story. Um, I would definitely seek out a lore video if you're more interested in about it. Then we have probably the funniest origin in this entire book. But you could play as Mr. Handy. And if you don't know, Mr. Handy is... A robot, basically. Uh, they are these robots that kind that uh, people had back before the Great War that came to help them during tasks. And actually, this picture right here is very indicative of what I want a Mr. Handy robot to be. I mean, look at that. He's got like a rifle in one hand and he's been hunting. And that hat is obviously cute. But the Mr. Handy robot gets a special trait. You have 360 degree vision and improved sensory systems that can detect smell, chemicals, and radiation, reducing the difficulty of perception tests that rely on sight and smell by one. You are also immune to radiation and poison damage, but you cannot use chems, nor can you benefit from food, drink, or rest. You move by jet propulsion, hovering above the ground, unaffected by difficult terrain or obstacles. Your carry weight is 150 pounds, and it cannot be increased by your strength or perks, but it can be increased by modified armor. You cannot recover from your own injuries or heal health points without receiving repairs. You cannot manipulate the physical world like humans do. Instead, you have three of the arm attachments in the arm attachments table on the following page, by the way, determined by your choice of equipment packs. If you selected an arm that features a weapon, you also gain 20 shots of ammo for that weapon. So the only problem that I have with this one is the improved sensory systems. Like that just seems a little bit too much. Like I guess that might be a lore thing, but to me that I, I think that's giving the Mr. Handy robots a little bit too much. But then again, you know, they are robots. They might not even have pincers. Then we have the survivor. The survivor are people that have basically been living in the wasteland since after the Great War, and they've kind of made a life here. They're, they're basically surviving out in the wastelands. Um, they have an interesting trait. Um, you can choose two of the following traits, or one trait and one additional perk. Each trait has a benefit and may have an accompanying penalty. So they can be educated. You have one additional tag skill, and there's also a penalty for that. I'm not going to read the penalties. I'll just read through the benefits. Fast shot. If you take a second major action in combat and use it to make a range attack, the additional major action only costs one AP rather than two. You have gifted, which is two, choose two special attributes and increase them by a plus one each. Heavy handed, which means your melee damage bonus increases by one um, effect die. Small frame. You may reroll 1d20 to all agility tests, which rely on balance and contortion. Again, there are penalties for any of those traits. So they're kind of like the humans, I guess, in a typical Dungeons & Dragons game where they get extra stuff at the very beginning. And then you have your Vault Dwellers. So the during the time of the Great War, um, people signed up to basically go to a vault when the time of the bombs came. Uh, most of the people in the world, or at least in the United States, were left out in the open. But... A select few, like 0.1% of the population, were allowed to go into these vaults. 
And if you know anything about Fallout, most of those vaults were pretty scary. So you actually come from one of these probably not so scary vaults. They have the trait called Vault Kid. Your healthier start to life at the hands of trained doctors and sophisticated autodocs means you reduce the difficulty of all endurance tests to resist the effects of disease. In addition, your carefully planned upbringing means you have one additional tax skill of your choice. You may also work with the Game Master to determine what sort of experiment took place within your vault. Once per quest, the GM may introduce a complication which reflects the nature of the experiment you unwittingly took part in, or introduce a complication related to your early life of isolation and confinement within the vault. If the GM does this, you immediately regain one luck point. Yippee. So those are your six starting or your six origins that you can choose from. And I believe I am going to become a super mutant. I just absolutely love the idea of being a super mutant in this game. It's it, it's so cool. <laughs> so there we go. Um, I will, of course, refer back to the super mutant page so I can kind of write down their trait. Unless there's actually a spot for that trait. so much easier than other PDFs that I've actually had the privilege of reviewing and writing stuff in. So awesome, awesome. And so strength goes up by plus two and endurance also goes up by plus two. So I'm just going to write that there just to kind of remember. And we need to remember that all the other stats um, or attributes go have a maximum of six. And so... Anyways, let's continue on because now we get our skills or our special attributes. So there's two different ways of doing your special attributes. You can actually choose an already calculated uh, method. So you can either do balance, focus, or specialized, or you can actually do it yourself. And in order to do it yourself, um, you have you start off with five ranks in every skill or every attribute. So five strength, five endurance, five agility, everything is five across the board. And then you have five more points to increase it, any of those or attributes by one point, or you could decrease it down to four and gain a point. Um, you can't go lower than four, unfortunately, like it, uh, the Fallout game. So uh, yeah, you ain't gonna be... Uh, uh, min maxing there so i think i am actually going to choose a specialized version and so i'm actually going to dump intelligence as four i'm also going to dump charisma into four so strength is going to get the nine which will make it into an 11 that's almost at max right there uh perception could or no endurance is going to be at i think the next one is eight which gives it to 10 yeah so we're going to make this into a 10 the next one's going to be perception actually everything else is going to be five okay i can settle with that so i think what we're going to end up doing is basically making a super melee combat super mutant. I think that would be pretty interesting. And I think that's kind of indicative of like what most super mutants already do in the Fallout games. So, hey, look at that. We're your typical super mutant. Um, now we need to get into our tag skills. Okay, so tag skills... We get to choose three skills to become our tag skills. So we get a plus two, I believe. Or these are the most important skills of our character. Each of our tag skills begins at rank two. So the thing about tag skills, um, the 2d20 system is a roll under your special or skill. Or basically, you're rolling under your specials plus skill. And if you roll under you succeed. If you roll over, you kind of fail. The thing about tag skills is if I roll a one or a two, I believe, because I'm starting at rank two, it becomes a critical success. 
And so as my tax skills increase, that crit range also increases. So that's a very interesting way of doing crits, um, especially for like tag skills. So we have, I believe, three to choose from. So uh, I definitely want to do maybe big guns would be one. Melee weapons would be another one. And I would say athletics, but I think that we are just going to be like your super tanky, you know, super durable dude. So maybe unarmed would be the way to go. That against some survivability would be also good as well, but hmm, choices, choices. Let's go with unarmed for now. We'll get some unarmed in there. So we can basically hit with anything and everything um, from our big guns to melee weapons to any, if we happen to be caught off guard, we'll be unarmed as well. So there we go. You may then buy ranks in your other skills. You have a total number of skill points equal to nine plus your intelligence. So that would be 13 and each skill point may be spent to buy one rank in any skill. Um, during character creation, you cannot increase any skill to a rank above three. So there we go. Skills have also a maximum rank of six, except for us, we have a rank of, um, four, a maximum value of four. So what we can do here, I'm actually going to increase this big guns to four, or actually we can't do that. It has to be above three. So we're going to increase this one to three. We're going to increase melee up to three. Let's get two points into survival and then two points into athletics. Whoops, not six, but two. There we go. I think that's probably best. So we have two, four, six, eight. Okay, I want three points in survival. I want three points into throwing because I can totally see this guy just throwing anything and everything <laughs> at his enemies. So we have two, four, six, and then we have 12. So we need one more point. Where do we want it? What isn't major for us? To me, that's going to be small guns. We're going to put one point into small guns just in case. Although, let's be honest, if he ever finds a small gun, he would probably just toss it away. Well, actually, you know what? Energy weapons would be pretty good, I guess. We would actually use energy weapons. Possibly. So there we go. That's our skills and our tag skills. And now we get to finally choose our first perk. Okay, so the... Uh, Perks, this is a very huge list of perks. And most of these come straight out of the Fallout games in name. But of course, this being a tabletop RPG, it's going to work a little bit different. You still have um, ranks in certain perks, and you also have requirements, either level requirements or um, special attributes being at a certain level or even both. So there is that. Some perks also... The ones that are actually ranked um, will tell you that you cannot increase this until you are like level this and that. So it kind of builds up. It scales up a little bit. So we have Action Boy. When you spend AP to take an additional major action, you do not suffer the increased skill test difficulty um, during your second action. This would be very good for our Super Mutant Bad Boy. Big League, when you make a melee attack with a two-handed melee weapon, the weapon gains the vicious damage effect. Um, that would be another one that I would take. Faster healing. Um, that would also be a pretty good one to have. So basically, when you make an endurance plus survival test to heal your own injuries, the first additional d20 you buy is free, and the normal maximum of 5d20 still applies, so you can actually only roll 5d20s on anything, on any skill test in this game so having that first one be free means that we can spend um lesser ap to actually uh buy some of those d20s which i'll explain in my review when i actually do this when i get my physical copy that is heave ho 
When you make a thrown weapon attack, you may spend one AP to increase the range of the weapon by one step from close to medium or from medium to long. Um, also good, but I don't think it is going to be what we want right away. Mainly because I don't think we're going to be using a whole lot of thrown weapons at the very beginning. Iron Fist. At rank one, your unarmed attacks inflict plus one um, effect or plus one uh, die damage. At rank two, your unarmed attacks also gain the vicious damage effect. Each time you take this perk, this, the level requirement increases by five. That would be really cool to get, but I think what our main focus is going to be on is melee weapons, specifically probably two-handed weapons. Um, Mysterious Stranger is also quite funny, and I'm actually really surprised that it's in this game. Okay, so hear me out. From time to time, a Mysterious Stranger comes to your aid with lethal results. At the start of a combat encounter, you may spend one luck point. If you do so, then at any point during the scene, the GM may have the Mysterious Stranger appear, make a single ranged attack against an enemy you attacked, or who just attacked you, and then vanish. If you spend a luck point and the Mysterious Stranger does not appear, the GM must refund your luck point you spent. The Stranger has an agility of 10, a small gun skill of 6, and those stats, but I think it's just hilarious that you can actually use the Mysterious Stranger in his game. Like, he just pops out of nowhere. And I think they also make a mention that if you try to find him, or yeah, any attempt to find where the Stranger went after their attack fails. So, yeah, he just vanishes, so... Booyah. The pain train. You may charge as a major action if you are wearing power armor or are a super mutant. This is a movement action and you may not move or sprint in the same turn when you take this action. So this would be a really cool one to have as well. Being Having, having the ability to actually charge would be really cool. And the test we make is strength plus athletics. With a difficulty of two, that means we have to roll under our um, under our strength and athletics uh, score twice with our two d20s or more because we can actually buy two d20 or buy more d20s for a skill. Um, so that would be a really good one to have. Slayer, when you inflict any damage with an unarmed attack or melee weapon, you may spend one luck point to immediately inflict a critical hit and therefore an injury on the location hit. That would be pretty good, actually. I don't think this will be the first one that we'll take, but it will actually be good in the long run. So the ones that I have thought of, definitely Action Boy, Big League, Faster Healing, Heave Ho, um, Slayer, Pain Train, and Iron Fist. Those are all good options for the Super Mutant. I actually think we're going to take Pain Train. Um, because that actually gives us an ability right off the bat that's actually fairly good. So, Pain Train. Alright, so we have our perks now. Now we can uh, figure out what our derived stats are. All right, so for carry weight, there's a nice little handy dandy formula. It's 150 plus your strength times 10, and that's how much total weight that you can actually carry. Um, perks will also increase that, or certain perks will also increase that, but then again, we don't have any of those. So our strength is at 11, so times 10 is going to be 110. So our actual max carry weight is going to be 260 pounds. And that's actually at the very bottom of the character sheet. So maximum carry weight is 260. There we go. Then we have, let's see, damage resistance. Your resistance to different types of damage is determined by your equipment and your perks. Um, basically at the start, we have damage resistance of zero for all of our um, areas. So we actually won't be able to do this until after we pick our starting loadout, if it gives us equipment. So that's a bummer, but we do have some defense. Your defense statistic is the basic difficulty of any attacks made against you. It is based on your agility attribute. 
So if your agility is eight or less, your defense is one. If it's nine or higher, it's two. It's going to be one for us because our agility is a paltry five. So defense is one. That means it'll take one success for any enemy to actually hit us. Initiative is our perception plus agility together. Your initiative determines how quickly you act in combat. So yay. And this is actually set in stone. So perception and agility um, is going to be 10. So that means um, our initiative is always going to be 10. We don't actually roll for initiative. It's whoever has the higher initiative gets to go in that order. So very different way of doing it, but it's very quick. It doesn't require you to actually think outside the box by rolling and then keeping track of things. You just got to remember that who goes first in your party. Of course, you can like postpone your turn, but I mean, your regardless, your initiative is going to be the same. All right, for health points, let's see. Um, endurance plus luck determines our maximum health points at first level. So endurance plus luck. Our luck is five, our endurance is 10. So our health is at 15. And yeah, the values are actually going to be low in this game, but it kind of makes sense in the long run. So don't get caught up that by the fact that my little lonely super mutant only has a paltry 15 HP. This ain't Dungeons and Dragons where you're a superhero, okay? All right, so for melee damage, um, your melee damage statistic lists any bonus damage you do with melee weapons or unarmed attacks due to having a high strength attribute. If you have a high, if you have a strength of six or less, you gain no bonus. Well, guess what? We have eleven plus, so that means we're gonna have a plus three. That means every time we successfully hit with our melee attacks, we get to add three damage to that. So that's very cool. All right, so that's it for the derived set stats, and that's actually it for any stats or anything like that, except for damage reduction. So we're gonna move on to choosing our equipment. So I really do like this way of doing equipment. Um, it's not that you get a certain amount of caps and then you have to go hunting throughout the book to figure out what you want and stuff like that. It's basically determined by your origin. And each origin does have several options. So like the Brotherhood of Steel has the Brotherhood of Steel Initiate, or you could have the Steel Scribe, and they both give you some different things. Um, the Mr. Handy has different uh, loadouts based on which Mr. Handy that you are. So you could be Miss Nanny, Mr. Farmhand, Mr. Gutsy. So... I really actually do like the fact that you can diversify your Mr. Handy that way by actually having a different loadout. That's really cool. So for the Super Mutant, we have two options for us. We have the Brute or the Skirmisher. For the Brute, you're big, tough, and more than capable of surviving in the Wasteland with little more than Brute Force and Determination. We get Raider Armor Torso plus Raider Armor for one leg or one arm. We have a pipe rifle, a baseball bat or machete, a personal trinket, and five caps. For the skirmisher, you're bigger and tougher than most of your fellow mutants, but only because you know the secrets of getting better punchier gear. You receive the following equipment. Raider, torso, raider armor torso plus raider armor for one leg or one arm, a heavy bolt action pipe rifle, uh, a board, a personal trinket. Um, we are going to go for the brute because we do get access to that baseball bat, and that's what I want. I want a baseball bat. I want a nice melee weapon that we can use. So we do need to write down that we are going to have Raider Armor because we will actually need to write down the stats for that and apply it to our character sheet. We also get access to a pipe rifle and... Oh, I don't know specifically what skill that entails. I don't think it's small guns, but I would I will look this up in the book to actually make sure. So we do have a pipe rifle. So I will actually need to look up the stats because we don't have access to that, but point thirty eight caliber ammo. And we have six plus or yeah six plus three i don't have that dice on me just yet so i won't be able to actually write that down but i will write six plus three die 
So what you would do is you would actually roll those three dice and however many um, symbols occur on that, that face is how much you add to six. We have a baseball bat, which I am thankful for. We're going to have some fun with that one. That is melee, no doubt. That is also one of our tag skills, I believe, yes. So, awesome, awesome. We have a personal trinket, which I will have to come up with later. And we also have five caps. Because, I mean, we're a super mutant. Why would we have caps? Why don't we just, like, rip somebody's arm off and take what we need? I mean, that's, that's what I would do, honestly. So, the other origins also get some equipment as well so the vault dweller has the vault tech resident vault tech security the wastelander has the mercenary raider settler trader wanderer um so the wastelander are ghouls or survivors basically so if you chose one of those two origins and this would be what you would pick from um, a personal trinket I would. I don't think I would roll on this for the super mutant. I would actually come up with something that fits my character. Um, let's see. Items gained from tag skills. So this is actually really cool. So your tag skills actually give you items. So we have three of them. We have big guns. So what do we get? Give me a big, nice gun. Oh. We get four plus two dice rolls, shots of flame or fuel. Uh, that's sure. We don't have flamer. We don't have the flamer quite yet, but oh well. We also have melee weapons. So a machete or a baseball bat. Yippee, we already have one of those. But I will actually go ahead and add the machete to our weapons. So now we have two melee weapons just in case one breaks. You never know. Those baseball bats tend to be a little flimsy in the hands of a super mutant. And we also have unarmed i believe was our other one yeah we get knuckles yay um so if you go at starting equipment at higher levels you get caps you get additional caps but oh well so let's take a look at the equipment i'm gonna actually go ahead and find the items that we have and then write down their like traits all right, so for the equipment, you are going to have to actually go to chapter four in order to find the stats for like armor and your weapons. And so for the armor, we it was a little bit confusing because the Raider armor comes in three different categories. There's your standard Raider armor, sturdy, and then heavy armor. Um, and they go up in uh, rarity. So I opted to go ahead and be on the safe side and just choose the standard one, especially as a level one character. That's probably what we're going to have access to anyways. So we have one chest piece and one uh, arm piece. That should be. And so um, they provide one physical damage resistance and one energy damage resistance, but no radiation damage resistance, which is okay because um, we're a super mutant. And I kind of forgot what HP is. So that's probably the HP for our body parts, I want to say. And so basically, whenever you hit a enemy or if you get hit, you roll a d20 and that kind of determines where you get hit. Or you could actually take an aim shot. So that's kind of how it works here. And so I opted to put the piece on the right arm for another one physical damage resistance and one energy damage resistance. And so we have at least our torso covered and one of our arms, probably our good arm, let's just say. For our weapons, so the pipe gun is actually a small gun, um, which gives us three rolls on the damage die or the effect die. I can never remember what it's called. Its type is physical with a rate of two. So that means we can fire it twice for one attack and its range is actually close. And it's got two qualities, close quarters and unreliable. And it uses 0.38 ammo and it weighs two pounds. Our baseball bat is a melee weapon. And we do have that as a tag skill, which is really good. So extended crit range, remember. And we get four rolls on the effects die. It is type physical with no rate because we can only use it once because it's a melee. And of course, you have to be in uh, 
melee range in order to use it. It is two-handed though, so that's really cool and it weighs three pounds. Our machete though is actually quite useful. It does three uh, dice rolls and uh, has piercing one, which I didn't think would have. I mean, I thought, always thought a machete was like, you know, use it like a blunt weapon. You just like hack and slash. And I didn't actually think you poked with it. And then our knuckles is unarmed with a damage of three. Its type is physical, but we can actually conceal it. And it weighs less than a pound. Not that a super mutant has any need to conceal a weapon because super mutant ain't going into a, you know, living location or a heavy populated location. So that is our super mutant. Of course, we do need to name him. And I have sort of thought of a name, but then I forgot it. Actually, I just remembered it. It is going to be Ritz. Like young Frankenstein, put on the Ritz. Yeah, that's kind of what I have. So there we go. We have Ritz the Super Mutant. With a strength of 11, perception of 5, endurance of 10, charisma of 4, intelligence of 4, agility of 5, and luck of 5. So I'm actually really looking forward to plugging them in for my players to kill if we ever play this game. But hey... That is the game. And I actually had a lot of fun going through some of this and actually picking stuff out. This is a very unique game, and I'm really looking forward to getting my physical copy someday during the summer once it ships from England, because that's modifious for you. But anyways, feel free to leave a comment down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up to support this series, and subscribe if you would like to see more. Of course, I will see you guys in the next video.